ChatGPT is revolutionizing the way people think about productivity and a developer's life has never been easier. In this video on ChatGPT for developers, we will see how you can automate your code solutions using ChatGPT. Whether you are a student or a developer, this video is all you need to make your life much easier. To start this video, let me give you a brief introduction on what ChatGPT is about. ChatGPT was developed by the same people who are behind OpenAI who have recently been working on some really interesting things. They have built stuff like GPT-3, Codex, DALI, etc. But I think most developers would know it more for OpenAI Playground which has helped many people write really good code. ChatGPT is just a simpler and more versatile extension of this. It can hold conversations, write blogs, write code, fix errors, provide management plans, etc. All of this is being done for free. So you can think of ChatGPT as an AI model that is capable of generating text based on prompts. It uses deep learning to understand what you're saying and comes up with a response that sounds very much like a real person. But how does it work? This field of study is called Natural Language Processing or NLP. Basically, what you do over here is you train an AI model by giving it languages as parameters. You give the AI model a large amount of language data and once that AI model learns the patterns in the language, along with the grammar and meanings, it can generate responses in that language. A lot of people get confused by this. They say, if ChatGPT is just an NLP model, why exactly did OpenAI develop it? They already had Codex, and the difference between them is quite simple. ChatGPT is just a lot more versatile and can be used in more ways than Codex. The GPT-3 model that ChatGPT uses understands natural language, while Codex can only understand code. While ChatGPT is great for developers, it does have some limitations. It may occasionally generate incorrect information, and along with that incorrect information, some of its responses can also be harmful or racist. You should also know that it was trained on data that was available before 2021, so it has limited knowledge of current events. So to summarize everything we talked about, ChatGPT is an excellent tool that can make your life much easier. But it is still no replacement for human interaction and verified sources of information. This is all the theory behind it. Now let's move on to how we can use ChatGPT. All you need to do is open chat.openai.com. This is the URL of ChatGPT and the moment you open this, it will ask you to create an account. Once you do that, you will land in a web page similar to this. Now, I thought a lot of ways about how to show you the different ways you can use ChatGPT. So I section the type of questions I'll be using in the prompts. I highly recommend that you watch the entire video if you are a new techie, but if you want to, you can skip to the part that you find most interesting. I'll start with the general questions, after which we can see some Python examples. We will also see HTML and CSS examples, JavaScript examples, Node.js examples, and we will finish up with SQL examples. So the first thing that you should know in general questions is that ChatGPT can help you with writing shell scripts. The way to do that is quite simple. Once you go to ChatGPT, you can see a text box over here. This is where you write your prompts and once you click enter, ChatGPT will start generating a response. So let's start by asking ChatGPT if it can write a bash script that can monitor the number of TCP connections along with time-related information. And the moment I click enter, you can see that ChatGPT zooms through an answer. ChatGPT provides an answer with explanations and code. It's also filtering the answer with only the established TCP connections. It also provides a sleep timer that lets this code pause for 5 seconds before checking again. Now, this snippet of code can be copied and pasted directly into your editor and also ChatGPT gives you explanations of how this code works. By the way, 
Did you know that ChatGPT's explanations are way better than what most university professors provide? While I am providing more coding examples over here, know that ChatGPT can help you with other stuff too. Like for example, I can also ask ChatGPT to suggest the best books for Python. And it immediately starts giving you an answer. But this is where you might find one of the limitations in Python. Like I told you before, ChatGPT was trained on data before 2021. So, some of these might not be relevant right now. You might find better books if you just search for them. For the third example, let me ask ChatGPT, how do I know if I have committed my code into a Git repository? This is something that most developers do all the time. And ChatGPT is already giving you an answer on how to do it. You can see that it has provided an example of using git log and also comes with the output like commit, author, date, etc. You can also use ChatGPT for content creation. For example, let me ask ChatGPT to give me a list of blog ideas for Python. ChatGPT gets right to it. It gives me multiple blog ideas to choose from and from here, I can start creating my content. It can also help with contract writing. For example, let me ask, can you create a contract for a video release which is specific to Indian laws? And ChatGPT starts by saying that it does not have the ability to draft a contract specifically tailored to certain laws, but it does provide an overview of what that contract should contain. This answer might not be everything that you hope for, but at least now you have an idea about where to start from. You can also use ChatGPT to prepare for an interview. Like over here, I have put help me with my Python interview and it gives me a list of the most popular questions asked during a Python interview. You can start by learning answers for these questions and then move on to additional stuff which ChatGPT itself has mentioned like data structures, control structures, functions, classes, modules, etc. It also tells you that you should be familiar with common libraries and modules used in Python, such as NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, Skykitlearn, etc. ChatGPT also gives you pointers on how to approach the interview, to mention your past projects, and to be prepared for problem-solving questions. If you are a student using ChatGPT to revise your knowledge, you can also use ChatGPT to help you with different kinds of programs. For example, I can ask, how do I write a program for Fibonacci series? ChatGPT will give you a code and also the explanation of how this code would work. This tool will be extremely helpful if you are just reviewing your knowledge. Moving on to Python examples, you should know that ChatGPT is extremely good at writing Python code. For example, I can give it a prompt like, how to scrape the first 50 results from Amazon for the search term smartphone. Now this is something that a lot of data analysts do on a regular basis while collecting data. And you can see over here that ChatGPT is already importing requests, beautiful soup, etc., and integrating various libraries into your code. It's storing all of the results in a list called product list, and it is looping through the product list to store all the relevant data. You can also see that it has mentioned class names over here. Now, this might not contain all the details that you were looking for. And if that is the case, then you can prompt ChatGPT to update your answers with the details that you require. We can also use ChatGPT for regular coding tasks. Like, let me ask ChatGPT to write a Python program that can generate an OTP. These are the type of codes that developers run into once in a while. And with ChatGPT over here, you don't need to Google for these solutions anymore. You can also ask ChatGPT to provide codes that help you with image processing. For example, let me type write a Python program 
to blur an image. And you can see over here that Python immediately imports the CV2 library and then uses imread to read the image, uses Gaussian blur to blur the image, it shows the image, uses a wait key and also then destroys all windows. The code has also given you input options where you can enter the path for your image. These are some of the applications that you can see for Python using ChatGPT. Now moving on to HTML and CSS, let's first ask ChatGPT to make a website template using HTML and CSS with a beige theme. You can see that ChatGPT directly heads over to the code and it starts with the HTML code, adds a CSS section which follows the beige theme website. And it's being quite quirky over here by adding a H1 tag saying welcome to beige theme website. This is the power of ChatGPT for web development. It not only provides you the HTML and CSS code, but it directly understands that you need to have different sections like about our services, etc. And also adds copyright footers. It provides you with an explanation of what goes on in the code, which you can directly use in your documentation. Let's now ask it to write HTML and CSS code to display a profile picture at the top left of this website. This is something that developers usually do and is quite simple, but still, it is a great way of showing ChatGPT's capabilities. You can also see that the code has included dummy parts for your images. This is something that you can change after you copy this code into your editor. Moving on to JavaScript examples, we can first ask ChatGPT to write JavaScript code to send HTTP requests. ChatGPT begins by saying that we can use XML HTTP request to do this. And then it gives us a sample code snippet on how we can use this. After that, it has also included an additional snippet that tells you how to send a POST request. And like usual, you also get some documentation right at the end, which explains how the code works. We can also ask ChatGPT to solve a very common use case that is done in JavaScript, and that is to verify user information. Write a JavaScript code to verify user information like name, age, date of birth, email ID, and password. ChatGPT begins by creating a function called verifyUserInfo, after which it fetches all the variables. It then starts verifying and validating information. You can see that it has verified name for the null condition, verified age for empty or age less than zero condition. It has also verified the email syntax and has checked if password is greater than eight characters. When all of these verification checks have been passed, it provides an alert saying user information is valid. Now let's move on to Node.js examples. We'll first start by asking it to write the backend code for an online delivery company using Node.js and Express.js. Now, this is quite a huge task, but look at ChatGPT. It's already providing you with the entire template. It creates dummy delivery records and using those records for functions. It's verifying records using get requests, post requests, put requests, and much more. Who's gonna say that coding is tough after this? All you need to do is understand the code and modify it appropriately. Workloads are smaller than ever before, all cause of one free to use tool. You don't even need to put a lot of effort into documentations because of this. One thing that I forgot to mention before is that you can start building new prompts based on your previous prompts. So to show how this works, let me just type in a new prompt. So let me say, great, integrate this code with CouchDB database. Now, if you look at the prompt and the output, I haven't mentioned anywhere that this code is for the delivery company. ChatGPT directly understands this and provides an answer based on the context. This is the conversation making abilities that ChatGPT has. 
If you don't want to continue the conversation and you want to start a new conversation, there are pros and cons to this. While continuing a conversation sounds really interesting, your previous prompts can affect the output that you get in the future. So if you don't want your previous answers affecting your current answers, all you need to do is create a new conversation. You can do that by heading over here and clicking on new chat. This will create a new conversation for you where the model doesn't have any assumptions. Now let's start with examples for SQL. Let me start by asking ChatGPT to create a database schema for an edtech company. This is usually a time consuming task with a lot of different variables. And you can see that ChatGPT has gone through and created a simple basic database schema for us. Now we can use the schema as is, or if we want to make some edits, we can do that ourselves. Since this is a conversation in itself, we can also ask ChatGPT to directly implement the schema using SQL queries. Using ChatGPT, we can automate most of the tasks that goes on during this process, right from the creation of the schema to execution of it. Now let's go ahead and ask ChatGPT to write SQL queries that can add records to these tables. You can see that ChatGPT has provided queries that can add records to the table. This is quite interesting, but not quite what I was looking for. Let's see if ChatGPT can find a more efficient way to do this. And yes, ChatGPT can also improve its answers. It can also improve queries. It's showing you multiple suggestions on how you can improve the efficiency of your inserts. And this is being done for MySQL, Postgre, etc. So these are some of the applications that I found. What do you think of it? Do you know a better way to use ChatGPT? Let us know in the comments down below.